All right, YouTube. Here's a nice little electrical problem for a, for a end of the week. You get a gear driven alternator on the back of this Cessna. And we have got, or had for some years, I think, an intermittent charging problem, because I notice a lot of things have been replaced. And the wiring was a mess. I spent a little while going through the wiring. I'll show you some pictures of some, some little chafes and shorts that I found. I'll try and edit some stills into there. The alternator, uh, I'll show you a picture of that in a second. When we took that off, we found bits rattling around inside it, so we put an alternator on. Now, unfortunately, the problem is still there. And I've been through this, this wiring and checked continuity to the rows and bits on the regulator. So, uh, there's, a, there's another little irritation on these Cessnas that comes up every so often. Underneath the instrument panel, there's an overvoltage protection device in the field circuit. And there's also somewhere a breaker or a, a current protection device in the field circuit. So we're going to have a little hunt around for that because basically I'm not getting field voltage up to the uh, supply to the regulator. I'll just check that. All right, I should have voltage here at this filter, which is the line up from the um, from the switch terminal to the regulator. It actually supplies the regulator in through this wire here regulator then adjusts the field voltage as required to the alternator which should be maximum pretty much system voltage now because the alternator is not turning or trying to generate um, there's a wire here where the regulator senses alternator voltage and another wire down the bottom which puts a light on if a uh, if a protection circuit trips okay so here we have Nothing. A few millivolts if you're lucky. And that's just interference. So we gotta take a look under the panel, see what's going on there. Alright, so the orange wire on this this is the protect uh, over voltage protection device. Orange wire here should have pretty much system voltage in it. Nicht. Nothing. So we're going to have to get underneath, slip a few tie wraps, and see where that wire actually goes. Um, it should go to a, according to the latest wiring instructions, should go to a two amp circuit breaker, but I can't find a two amp circuit breaker. This model has fuses, not circuit breakers. And this is another thing you find on Cessnas, the wiring diagrams don't exactly tie up with the years and you'll find sort of dual, double weird things. So, um, we'll have a look underneath. Alright, I'm jammed right under here now. There's, there's my protection device. Orange wire I'm looking for should go to master switch. Red wire, actually red wire here. Should go to some kind of protection device. I'm just wiggling it. Ah. Oh, sweet! My light's gone. Let's put the light on on the phone for a minute. Now, uh, what have we here? Can you see that? Ah. Where's my red wire? Oh, red wire. <laughs> That's that baby there. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. There's my red wire. There. So what and this this is coming from the uh, yeah, the main bus. What big turn on the alternator field. Right on the alternator output rather, circuit breaker. So this this here. All right, let's check voltage here and here. 
that this looks like a protection device, but what's concerning me now is what the fuck, excuse my French, is this rather unprotected, non-standard crimped in capacitor. Ah, let's go and have a look at a wiring diagram. I think we man, yeah. might should have power here because that is connected straight to. All right, I need to do some more checks. Stand by. Right, I found a wiring diagram that does relate to what I'm looking at. It's got the regulator with the four pins. Okay, what I was looking at here. This on the diagram shows a two amp circuit breaker. But I think that's what I'm looking at because, okay, it had a wire from the 60 amp to this side of it. And on the other side of it was that funny non-standard capacitor going down to the master switch. The protection device, red, orange. So what we actually need to know is whether we've got power here. If we're not getting power on the orange, which we're definitely not, and we're not getting power up at this filter which we're not have we got power here and here that's going to tell us if it's this order protection device which is not supplying power to the regulator to, uh, to energize the alternator so let's go and see if we can get meters here yeah. here yeah, yeah. and on yep yeah. We know we've got no power here, nothing on the orange. So I want to check the red. If there's nothing on the red, I want to check here and here. And I want to do something with this non-standard uninsulated capacitor because actually those wires short down is going to kill the alternator. That goes to the battery side of the master switch. That's probably the ground side. It's probably just to prevent some kind of little voltage spike when you take the alternator on and offline with the switch maybe just leaks a little bit backwards and forwards here don't know mystery that one but whatever it is it can't be uninsulated connected to here because it's a fucking, this is what you find when you go into these things people people install non-standard things and confuse the hell out of you anyway let's get back underneath and just see if we can't get somewhere all right so we want to check red red there's nothing at all let's go and hang on yeah turn her on first we want to check red yeah 500 millivolts odd so what I need to know is where is that massive volts drop happening? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to crawl under. See what we can do here. Should be said it's lunchtime now. We make these videos in our own time in case the customer's watching. He's now getting some free diagnostics because God knows what this job has cost to. To uh, get through the whole airplane has been a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, let's get into it. Alright, so. Uh, what can we see here? I need to get in. Alright, um, uh, here I'm expecting the 500 millivolts there. Yeah. Can't move on there. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Now what I gotta do. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get this. This here. If I got if I got good voltage there. That is going to be my discontinuity. <laughs> but I can't see the mirror. Ah! <laughs> Look. Uh. 
All right, we got to the bottom of it. 11.6 volts on one side of that device and nichts on the other. So um, do a bit of research, find out what it is. It's not a two amp breaker like it shows on the diagram, some kind of other device. This is a French Cessna, so maybe the French use something else. We'll see. Right, so what I have is voltage here and not here. Okay, and the field circuit is all connected. So there's a couple of possibilities, I suppose. This is some kind of protection device, but according to this diagram, it should be uh, my number on three. Should be CA2 circuit breaker, two amp. Uh, four is TVA. One three one five capacitor. That's that capacitor. That's the the one that's been replaced with something from RS and not insulated. So this may be okay. Why would we have lack of voltage here? We've either got either this device has just failed, or it's tripped because of some kind of short here. So I suppose the capacitor could be shorted. I might snip that out of the line because it needs insulating anyway um, or replacing with the proper part if we can get one the capacitor could be shorted ah don't think so though I noticed when I got that 500 millivolts here it was building up very slowly now that would tie in with a high resistance in this device very high resistance here Mm, would it? This capacitor grounded at the other end, gradually charging as a tiny current can flow here. Yeah, I think if the capacitor was shorted, I would have nothing because uh, this field circuit is still connected. I suppose this could be connected. Now nah, I'm suspicious here, getting that, getting that half a volt gradually build up there. I think the capacitor's okay when it charged. The Field circuit is trying to draw its normal current, but it can't. I'm going for high resistance here. I'm going to do a bit of research on what that is. And uh, maybe bridge it with a circuit breaker. See what we get then. Yeah, I found a three amp breaker in the stores. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, bridge out that device and do some careful measurements, I think and see if we can't get it going anyway, just to prove a point. All right, crazy bodge the first. This is just to prove a point. We got a circuit breaker in place of that uh, protection device under the panel that was not carrying current. So we're gonna fire up the engine. Got the, uh, got a voltmeter connected to Buzz. Right, Ginger, carefully engage the breaker and see if she see if she will charge. There, prop. With the aid of a little jump start we're running and uh, I'm just going to, once I've got oil pressure and everything, have a look at my meter, that's uh, battery voltage there, which is perked up a bit from being on the jump leads. And uh, turn on the alternator and very carefully just dab the breaker. Yeah, yep. She's away. 1375, that's pretty good. Healthy charge there, which you'd get with a with a flat Concord battery. That's gonna draw 40, 50 amps initially. And if I take the alternator offline, yeah, we've got a high voltage warning that's feeding back from the regulator because it's sensed no field. 
and assume that a protection device is tripped. All right, we got there, we got a good charge and everything worked normally. There's still a mystery though, I'm just doing some final checks. Um, I can power it up. Get my voltage on there. Right, press the press the breaker in. Okay, 11.43 volts. Release the breaker. It doesn't stop charging. And the voltage hovers around 10, so it's feeding back somehow through one of these lines once it's been energized. Now the protection device just takes current through it, allows it through up to the field through the alternator side of the master. Could it be this capacitor's leaking in connected to the wrong place? I think I have to take these off one at a time. This one goes up to the high volt light. It'll be coming back through there. Might indicate a regulator fault. Hmm, let's see. Okay, so I found the source of my feedback. Um, what happens is, okay, we, we proved, I think, this was the device which had failed or gone high resistance. Okay, so that's our bus bar. Um, we've now got a 2 amp breaker in here. A little breaker that we installed. Um, as a, I don't know what that device was, I've not seen them before. Something that was used by Cessna for a little while. I guess not on the wiring diagrams that we've got. Okay, so it allows current, to field current and voltage to enter this point here. Normally that would go through the protection device. Um, if there's no over voltage condition the protection device allows current to pass to the master switch when you switch the master switch on it has a, it's a dual master switch there's an alternator side there and a battery side there when you switch this on it allows field current to go up to the switch terminal of the regulator okay and that will produce a field voltage the field terminal of the alternator. As you start the engine the alternator comes online that will produce an output to buzz and sensed here by the A plus terminal of the regulator. As the voltage comes up to required system voltage the regulator adjusts the field voltage to maintain the output at a nominal 14 volts. Um, that's how it works. Now this wire here indicator, if there is no voltage here at the switch terminal, this um, grounds inside the regulator and allows the current to flow up here through the warning light. It's placarded high volts on Cessnas, but what it means is probably this device has tripped or you've accidentally turned the master alternator side off or you haven't turned it on yet. This light will show along with a low volt light um, because this grounds inside the regulator um, and allows current to flow through the lamp to light the lamp to ground inside. What seems to be happening with this is it could be a slight design fault in the regulator. When you take the current away from here, there's still maybe 12 volts in the at this terminal here rather than ground, which you would sort of expect because it doesn't want to carry lamp current, it needs to oppose the current here in normal operation. So that is actually feeding just a little bit down, the lamp glows very dimly and it energises the field circuit again and that's my feedback loop that's keeping the voltage up after I've pulled the breaker. Um, there's a workaround for that, I can probably take this and put it on the other side here and protect it with a line fuse. It wouldn't actually cause a runaway alternator because if this protection device did, the over voltage device did actually trip due to an over voltage, it uh, would cut this loop 
and cut the field current. I think it's a big issue. I think it's a slight, this is an aftermarket regulator, maybe a slight design issue there, not fully compatible with the old Cessna circuit. With the workaround for that, um, and that's probably what we're going to end up having to do. Right, I have some good news. Um, I found my feedback loop, I'll show you that on the wiring diagram. There's a way around that. There's a circuit breaker shown in the wiring diagram instead of that funny, whatever that breaker type device, maybe some self resetting thermal device behind here that had failed. Don't know what that was. Um, there is a an old Cessna service kit which allows you to do exactly this. Um, put a 2 amp circuit breaker, this is a 3 but I'll put a 2 amp one when I can get one, in the field line at exactly that point. I'll read through that. So that gives us something to hang our hat on from a certification point of view. I have to mount the circuit breaker just on a little tiny sub panel there but it's not going to be in the way next to the headset jack so it's right under the master switch so the good news is i got that connected to the alternator field terminal when i press the breaker i get field voltage when i release the breaker i don't get field voltage um, and the thermal, the sorry, the over voltage protection there is in line with the breakers to the to the field. So that will work. That will function. That will cut the field in an over voltage condition. This will cut the field in an over current condition, like a shorted field winding. Um, protect the wiring there. Uh, the system should work. It was it was very intermittent before, particularly when hot. So I'm assuming that this, whatever this device under here was, was breaking down. And luckily, it, it broke down on me while I was doing some engine runs. So there's an intermittent fault. As I say, this thing has been in bits. Had so many new bits on. All these were undone and tie wrapped when I when I went under the panel. Um, so somebody's been spending a lot of time on this before and I hope, hope we finally cracked it. Um, get it tidied up tomorrow and see just exactly how we go. We've got a new cylinder on this so I've got to do a couple of engine runs and a flight test. So maybe we'll give it a good run and uh, prove it out again. As I say, it's all working correctly now. The high voltage light goes off when I reset that and the indicator comes on there to indicate that there's possibly been a high voltage condition because the field is not being fed. So all quite hopeful finally after a lot of messing around. Thanks for watching. Good night.